This is a quick video over the derivation of the log mean temperature difference. Now we have a concurrent system. That means our concurrent heat exchanger. That means the cold water and hot water are flowing in the same direction. So if this is, this is the hot water, and this is the cold, and it doesn't have to be hot water or cold water. It can be anything, but we're going to assume that the uh, mass flow rates for the cold and hot water are the same, and they're just, it's all the same. The heat capacities and everything are the same. We're just going to assume that. So then this point right here represents the cold water N. This point right here represents the hot water N. And then this point must represent the temperature of the cold water out. And this point represents the temperature of the hot water out. And we could imagine that the the greatest temperature difference between them would be in the beginning where they meet. So this is large, and then when you get down to here, it would be very little, and there wouldn't be as much heat transfer because they start having the same temperature. And again, and again, heat transfer is based on temperature differences, or the rate of heat transfer is based on the temperature difference. So what does the system really? What's its fundamental assumption? Its fundamental assumption is no heat no heat is lost to the surroundings or environment or anything no heat is lost all the hot all the heat from the hot water goes to the cold water or it just stays in the hot water none of the heat is lost to the environment so we assume that all the hot all the heat is that all the heat lost from the hot water is absorbed by the cold water so how can we actually calculate the heat loss from the hot water well it is actually just is actually just Q dot, just representing that as a unit of, uh, over time or something, is equal to the mass flow rate of the hot water times the heat capacity of the hot water times the temperature difference of the hot water, so T, uh, so THN minus TH out. And the same would be true for the cold water. So Q would equal M dot C, the heat capacity of the cold water, times, but it's backwards because we want Q to have the same value. So then it's, it's TC out minus TCN. And again, these values are the same. Now let's do, just now we have a total, but let's do the heat loss per a section of area. So let's try to find the heat loss in some infinitesimally small area. And this graph lines up, so we're going to try to find the heat loss in this little bit of an area. Actually, it should probably be a little bit smaller, but we're going to try to find that. So delta Q is equal to the uh, mass flow rate of the hot water times the heat capacity of the hot water times D T H or the temperature or the change in the temperature of the hot water in that se section. And the same is true for the cold water. So delta Q dot is equal to the mass flow rate of the cold water times the heat capacity of the cold water times the change in temperature of the cold water or the infinitesimally small change in cold water. Now let's solve these for DTH and DTC. So this now becomes DTH which is now equal to delta Q over M dot H CPH and DTC is equal to delta Q M dot or M dot C times CPC and now we're going to take the difference of them take the difference between these two so then we get DTH minus DTC. Oh. So we're the hot water is actually losing heat. So this would actually be a negative. So this is a negative. So you'll see why that's important in a second. So then we have that. And that's just equal to the DTH minus TC. 
Now we'll take the difference between these two. So we have a negative delta Q over a negative MH. Oh, I keep uh, dots on top of them. CPH minus the E capacity, oh, minus this. So then it's delta Q dot MC dot CPC. Now that we have that, we can do a little bit of a rearrangement. So we'll rearrange it just a little bit. So now D T H minus T C is equal to is equal to a negative delta Q negative delta Q one over M H C P H plus one over M C C P C and all we did is just multiply by negative one and remove or just said that delta Q was negative so that would be positive that would be positive and we just moved the delta negative delta Q out in front so now there's another way of actually calculating uh, the delta Q delta Q is actually equal to the uh, overall heat transfer unit U times the change in area or the surface area times T C minus or no T H T H minus T C and we're gonna plug this sucker right there so then we get D T H minus T C is equal to the negative negative U D our surface area change in surface area T H minus <laughs> minus T C and then again M H C P H plus one over M C C P C and now we're going to divide both sides by by T H minus T C T H minus T C and then we then get D T H minus T C all over T H minus T C is equal to a negative U D A S times one over M dot H C P H plus one over M dot C C P C. And now if we integrate, we get the natural log of T H out minus T C out all over T H N minus T C N and that equals negative U A over one over M dot H C P H plus one over M dot C C P C and what do we do from here? We're actually going to go back to the very top. We're going to solve for this and this. So when we solve for when we solve for Q, or not for Q, but for MC, we get M C C P C T C out minus T C N. If we were to solve for that, for M M C dot dot P C is equal to Q over T C out minus T C N. 
and the same will be true for the hot water. So it's the same for the hot water, so we have m dot h c p h is equal to q, except it's now t h n minus t h out. So now we're going to plug this guy, this guy right here, we're going to plug this guy right there. So our equation then becomes the natural log of th out minus tc out all over all over thn minus tcn is equal to the negative ua times thi minus th out all over all over q plus t cold in or no t cold out minus t cold in over q and what we then want to do and what we want to do now is just do some really ugly 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 rearrangements so we're going to multiply this side by q q so then side this side becomes q so then we have q natural log t hot out minus t cold out over t hot n minus t cold n is equal to is equal to u a negative t hot n plus t hot out we just we're just dispersing that negative minus t cold out plus t cold n and what we want to do now well it's running out of space and now what we want to do is call and call this this part not this entire part but just t hot out we're going to say t hot t hot out minus t hot I mean t cold out is equal to delta t2 and we're going to say that t hot n minus t t cold n is equal to delta t1 and we're going to do the same here where then this now becomes q natural log delta t2 minus delta t1 is equal to ua and we're going to look for the delta t1 and delta t2 in here so then this ua times all that becomes delta t1 minus delta t2 and we get q q is equal to u a delta t1 minus delta t2 all over the natural log of delta t1 divided by delta t2 and we then call this part the log mean temperature difference or q is equal to u a delta t log mean.